Hello students, welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. We move to the fourth lecture of module 5, where we are discussing about personality and specifically in this lecture, we will look into some of the core personality traits that are relevant to organization. I am Dr. Abraham Salaisek, Assistant Professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's start today's lecture with the, with the theme. Personality traits play a significant role in the dynamics and functionality of organization. So we are having no doubt, absolutely no doubt when we say that personality traits are relevant. We have tried to establish the relative importance of all the traits in the previous sessions. Today we look into the traits in more deeper mode where we understand what are those traits that are very critical in an organizational setting. Now I tend to make use of or I take the support of big five traits to predict the work behavior. Research has found that as in my case the last few lectures are always of a particular module are always with respect to the research that has happened. So we have designed this course as I have already mentioned time and again that our course in organizational behavior is specifically backed by sound empirical research. So research has found that relationships between these personality dimensions and job performance exist. So it, it cannot be seen as two uh, disjoints set. These are two important aspects and they are very well interconnected between each other. So individuals who are dependable, reliable, careful, thorough, please remember the big five traits are coming into picture here, what we discussed in the previous class. So who are meticulous, able to plan, organized, hardworking, persistent, achievement oriented, tend to have higher job performance in most of all the occupations, if not all the occupations. So when we look into an individual who is reliable, who is dependable and who has all the certain traits, then he or she is going to be vital for the organization in the long run. Conscientiousness individuals who are more interested in learning than just performing. So please recall uh, the discussions of uh, the mastery based climate as well as the performance based climate in an organization in the job are also exceptionally good at maintaining performance in the face of negative feedback. So when we look into things from a research oriented angle, conscientiousness is more critical for managers as for frontline employees. So we, we look into the big five trades in general. There is one trait which is seldom addressed and that's emotional stability which translates to neuroticism. Emotional stability is most strongly related to life satisfaction, job satisfaction and low stress level. So many a times we see that people who can handle emotions well, who are capable to have a, a clear say or clear decision making uh, not to uh, you know are, are, are critically uh, equipped to avoid any cloudy judgments because of the emotional imbalance they are having. They are the individuals who tend to move up the ladder in the organization. So individuals are specifically designed in such a way that they are to perform better and to be an asset to na for the organization. But that said, there are certain critical aspects which we cannot deny and that is what context. That is what makes it all the more relevant. So when we look into aspects like context, whatever be the personality traits, whatever be the disposition, this is the, this is the thing which I want to underscore even when I am stating that there are certain personality traits that are quite relevant and I will try to uh, elaborate that in the next lecture as well. So when we look into other aspects like say individuals who score high on the openness, another trait in the big five, openness if, if you recall the previous class it was more of openness to experience. So when we look into openness to experience are more creative in science and art than those who score low. So when they are more uh, able to perceive things, then when they are more able to understand or absorb things, they are 
in a way better or uh, or in a in a way a uh, bit higher performers than the others in the lot so another important aspect of a big five which is agreeableness agreeable individuals are better like than disagreeable people as our common sense also agrees to that which explains why they tend to do better in interpersonally oriented jobs such as let's say customer service so if you are into an organization where you have to have man to man interaction where you have to have uh, you know always interaction with outside world and especially you are not in an automated regime then you need to have certain personality traits to boost your performance somebody who is having that is much better than somebody who is not having that now let's quickly look into those personality traits and organization which play a significant role in the dynamics and functionality of organization very quickly team dynamics you have to be a team person you have to have better interpersonal skills you have to have a certain level of mentality where you are able to sacrifice some of your uh, me time or some of your family time that is what nurtures and develops team dynamics leadership you need to have a certain personality uh, trait so that you know you can be commanding at times you can be also uh, the same person who is open to experience you can also be the person who is having a high control over the emotional uh, you know outbursts or emotional uh, problems or uh, you know dispersals or emotional issues which you are otherwise dealing with there could be other uh, issues or other aspects of workplace culture you are looking into a, a organization or you are part of an organization where there are people from different cultural contexts now how to mingle with them you might be quite nascent or quite new to such Uh, cultural phenomena so you might be not aware of such predisposition so all these aspects have to be understood and you have to be the right person in the right job at the right moment there could be also aspects like conflict resolution you need to be having a amicable personality many a time in in crude word we say that you have to adjust you have to adapt more importantly you have to take the organization along with you when i'm uh, specifying that it is specific to your goals and the organizational goals what what we have discussed time and again as strategic intent there could be also issues of decision making are you the right person for the right job and you are making the right decision i, I would like to take the neuroticism factor here how effective decisions are being made even in the presence of emotional outbursts or are emotions clouding your basic judgment or are you not able to make a rational decision because you are not open or you don't have the desired extraversion associated with that particular job or that particular context there are also issues pertaining to adaptability to change are you not able to adapt as i already mentioned adjust with the surroundings you might be in a new situation altogether there might be lot of workforce or there might be lot of uh, workload that is associated but are you able to handle the pressure are you that individual who is capable to understand the need of the job and deliver accordingly and sometimes there might be a boss who might be trying to put you in rounds of paperwork so that your performance might take a hit but are you the right person to understand the particular scenario and perform in a way that is more effective and efficient for the organization and for yourself are you the person who is good with customer relationship your interpersonal skills are in such a way that whatever be the support might be high might be low you are getting from the organization from the higher management still you are able to pull out a better job or better better performance what about your innovation and problem solving skills how much you are open to experience how much you are able to perceive things that's going around you in this world how much you are updated or getting updated yourself are you having the problem solving skills where sometimes you need to go an extra mile and approach them and problem does not come come in a very systematic manner sometimes let's say you might be in a leadership position and you might need fund for your department and you are at that position who has to convince your higher authorities to get some funds it could be any case it could be an example from industry it could be an example from the uh, academia 
So anywhere, are you the right person who is having the personality trait to go ahead and convince your higher authority that we need more funds? So that's a problem solving skill. Essentially, it won't be technical. When you look into problem solving, when we, when we try to understand problem solving as such, we have a general understanding that it's all about uh, the job related aspect. No, sometimes it might be something which is extraneous to the whole situation or context. So this is what makes some of the personality trait all the more relevant. What about workplace engagement and satisfaction? How you are getting along with your co-workers, co-employees, your boss, your subordinates, everything matters. Everything boils down to your personality trait. And finally, organizational resilience. You might be in an organization where, you are, where your boss is not recognizing your job. You might be in an organization where your co-workers are demeaning and uh, socially insulting you or socially undermining you. You might be in an organization where there is not a healthy culture of knowledge sharing. You might be in an organization where things are not going in the right manner as you desired. You are not getting the support from your subordinates. They were telling that they will do the job they didn't do. Unfortunately, you are the person who has to take the brunt. Are you in an organization like that? How much resilient you are towards all these aspects. This again boils down to your personality trait, how much you can take. And when you look into personality traits relevant within an organization, numerous traits are relevant and valuable within an organizational context. And some of them are leadership, flexibility, communication skills, collaboration, problem solving skills, emotional intelligence, time management, resilience, innovation, ethics, initiative, attention to detail, and empathy. I'm not going to explain because uh, in, in the previous lectures we have already explained or in the previous slides also we have taken up, except few things like one is ethics. Ethics is also having a certain association with your trait. How? Just ponder over a second and, and uh, look into all those situations where you were open to experience. You have understood that this is the ribe people operate, but still again you found that that is not in, in agreement with the principles of ethics. So you try to go one step ahead and looked into the aspects of extroversion, looked into the aspects of agreeableness in a, in a different way and tried to get the things done without compromising on your ethical values. There might be another aspect of attention to detail. Sometimes you are so meticulous in doing things, so critical in doing things that you tend to be the person who is the go-to person when some critical task has to be done. This is the quality that actually makes you the sought after person in the organization, attention to detail. So there are certain aspects, there are certain values which make you the go-to person and this is or this should be your ultimate uh, aim or ad ultimate objective. The organization should benefit from you unless and until the organization cannot benefit from you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me state it very frankly that the organization is not going to value you. Organization is not going to tolerate you and moreover the organization is not going to pay you. So this is what the whole personality traits relationship with an organization comes, it comes into or it boils down to that. And you look into impact of personality on individual innovation behavior in workplace. Individuals in the workplace are keys to the innovation organization. You cannot take out the individual and expect that the organization will improvise and moreover innovate in itself. You need to have creative ideas. You need to have fresh thoughts. You need to have clear perspectives. So when these are not there, in an organizational regime, in an organizational setting, your organization, whatever fancy name you are giving it to, be it even a research-based organization, your organization is not going to be an innovative one. So please understand, personality also matters there. So previous studies that have happened in this area have shown that there is a strong effect of personality on workplace behaviors, attitudes and performance. I've already given the reference there. Some of the personality characteristics, let's look into that. Some of the personality characteristics associated with innovation reported in the literature are imaginative, inquisitive, high energy, high desire for autonomy, 
social rule independence and high self confidence so please be aware that there are already studies that have found out this association and these personality characteristics and innovation connection when we look into impact of personality on individual innovation behavior there are also studies which have shown that openness to experience has a positive effect on individual innovation behavior specifically silvia et al 2009 argue that openness to experience one of the most important big five trait is fundamental to creativity because it predicts creativity in a wide range of domains and levels of analysis so finally the results of this particular study show that other personality dimensions have no effect on individual innovation behavior so basically when you look into one particular study of silvia et al 2009 the the relevance or the importance is given to openness and it is nothing but openness to experience so when we look into personality as such we have tried to understand personality in greater detail in the previous lectures but here we try to look into some of the key factors or key elements or key traits which are becoming all the more relevant in everyday scenario in your organization you might have to improve your game improve your performance in the organization then please try to develop those personality traits which are warranted which are sought after in your organization you might be the right person presently but think of a situation post 5 years or post 10 years from today how your organization is going to evolve or what is your career plan how you are you want to pitch in yourself as a particular individual who is the key aspect or the key person for a particular job so try to develop look into all those factors all those elements all those traits which we have discussed and try to develop yourself try to develop your organization accordingly thank you for listening to me patiently we'll see you in the next class Till then take care bye bye